May is National Foster Care Month. And there are so many kids, kids here in our Metro Detroit area that need foster care. To join us uh, to talk a little bit more, let's bring in Khadija walker Fobbs. She's the uh, Chief Strategy Officer for the Judson Center. You guys do such important work over there. Yes, thank you for having me. And um, absolutely, it is Foster Care Awareness Month. And this is a crucial time to just highlight the need that we have for the approximately 13,000 children in Michigan who need stable homes and placements and um, really just need people to open their hearts and be willing to uh, love and support them. Um, we've seen a lot of challenges that have arisen out of this pandemic. So the need's greater than ever right now for people who are um, willing to step in and, and uh, support our children. So with that, Khadija, could you tell me, what are you looking for in a foster family? Yes, it's, it's really simple. Um, are you willing to open your home? Are you willing to give time? Are you willing to um, open your heart to support um, a child, a teenager, and be that, be that permanent, stable um, person that they can rely on? And so anybody who is able to open their heart and, and be that person would be able to go through the process of becoming licensed. We would love to hear from you. We would love to have you. Uh, we've had over 200 children just in the last six months that we've had to place um, in foster care just through our agency. And we need homes because uh, the, the need is real and the challenges are real. And especially for our teens, we have um, so many people who um, sometimes are, are a little hesitant, you know, to uh, open their, their time and heart and a little unsure about um, our teens. But we have teens who are in foster care and they need um, support and they need stability and they need people who are willing to um, walk that walk through life with them. It's so when you talk about getting licensed, what is that process like? Yeah, so um, I'm so glad you asked. So it starts uh, with an orientation and some paperwork. And so um, if you go to judsoncenter.org, there's um, actually a frequently asked question zone. So you fill out an application, you have to do background clearances and background checks. Um, and there's actually an orientation where staff will walk you through what to expect, um, how we can be supportive to you, um, what the process is going to look like. And as quickly as a, black, a background check and the paperwork can be submitted, um, the process begins. So there's a home inspection just to make sure that uh, the home that you have is safe and will even help, help you out with meeting the need if there's things or items that are needed, such as uh, bedding, that type of thing. So uh, there's certain parameters with the state that we have to follow, but we help walk through that uh, with each person who is who is interested in becoming licensed. And so it's really not a complicated process. It takes some patience to just get through clearances and paperwork, but uh, we have staff, like I said, who are willing to stand by and help guide you through the process, um, uh, getting to that point of being licensed. And so um, it's, it's not that hard. We actually have an informational session for those who might be interested on May 22nd. It's just a virtual session. If you go to our Facebook pages, you can register. It's just a Q&A. So it just answers people's questions and lets them know what to expect once again. There's no pressure. It's just uh, getting more information on the process. So uh, can you tell me, like, if someone becomes a foster parent or they sign up for the program, how long are the kids typically in their household or just does it depend? It really depends. So, you know, the goal of foster care, um, and, and this is where sometimes misinformation is out there, the goal of foster care is really to reunify the child with their birth family, um, always. Now, in every situation, it's not possible. And so if that's not possible and um, the birth family's parental rights have been terminated, then that child would become available for adoption. But always the first uh, goal of foster care is keeping the child and reunifying the child back with their birth family. So that process could be 12 months. Um, it could take longer. It really depends on the, the, per, the situation that's happening with that individual family and how quickly they're moving towards the goals of whatever needs to be addressed to make that placement safe for that child. So, um, so it really does vary. Our goal is always for um, a shorter, shorter stay and that the child can go home to mom or dad or, or grandma or grandpa. Um, but, you know, that does not always happen in every case. 
and situation, especially if there's challenges around substance abuse or some other, other barriers that are longer term. Khadija Walker Bob's with us here on the MegaCast. She's the Chief Strategy Officer for the Judson Center. And when we talk about this, it seems pretty clean cut when you're looking at the paper, but really we're talking about people and emotions and Absolutely. attachments. So there could be a roller coaster ride there. Do you try to really help prepare the potential foster parents for what they could be in for? Absolutely. And you're, it's so true. It is anytime you're dealing with people, there's nothing clean and neat about that. And so we don't ever want to give the impression uh, that everything is neat and tidy. Um, what we do is we have support groups that meet every month, which I think is enormously important for anybody who's fostering and going through the process. We have trainings to help support our foster families, and we just allow them to connect with one another because every case and every child is so different. Um, some people might have a child in their home for many years. Um, some people might end up adopting a child who's been with them. If they were fostering and some people might have a child for, uh, like I said, 12 months. And then that child needs to return back to mom and dad because they've been able to get their life back on track. And so that support group is so key. Um, our staff are, are wonderful in walking through the process. Um, but I do think that connecting with other people who are fostering in that moment is is, is really uh, crucial. We do have a staff person called the foster care navigator and that's something that's unique to Judson Center. And that person uh, was a foster parent, they're on staff with us and they're literally there just to ask questions, kind of address crises when they come up um, and just be that support, that extra support that's needed. And so I think that that's really important. Um, that person actually facilitates our support groups as well. So I know that that's a, a nice layer of um, added support with the the challenges and the emotions that do go along with fostering. So we just have a few more minutes with you here on the mega cast. And I'm wondering too, are you anticipating so many more kids are going to be needed to be placed in foster care as we emerge out of the pandemic? Because you know, we know that uh, so many times it's the teachers that maybe are on the front lines that report some of the abuse or uh, some of their coaches. And that hasn't happened over the past year with virtual learning. Absolutely. I, I really do anticipate an uptick um, when we resume uh, more normal school schedules and sporting schedules in the fall. Um, you're absolutely right. A lot of the reporting does come out of school systems. It's when children are out in their communities or at camps, they're playing sports. And we, we've seen a drastic um, reduction over the last year in, in children coming into care, which would be normally a cause for celebration. And we would be saying, oh, this is amazing. But you know, we know that what's probably happening is that because children weren't in school, that reporting's not happening. I would like to think that um, you know, the abuse is not there and not present, but I don't think that that's the reality. And so we do anticipate that as things resume, we will see um, an increase in uptake, unfortunately of children coming into care. And so we need homes and we need people who, even if they just wanna get information on what it would take, um, are willing to do that because uh, we do anticipate seeing some changes, uh, especially this fall. And so um, being prepared is key and being able to be in a position to serve the children is key. Uh, that The thought of that just uh, breaks my heart, but with that, just about uh, 40 seconds here left with you on the mega cast. Uh, May, uh, May is National Foster Care Month. I know that you're hoping for donations. Give us more information. You're looking for your bikes and gym shoes. Absolutely. We have a whole campaign called Spring Into Action happening right now. It's on our Facebook page as well. We would love for people who are willing to donate new bikes or new tennis shoes to bring them down to Judson Center and make the arrangements through our Facebook events page. It's an opportunity to allow kids to get outside, to move, to be active. We know that this pandemic has also um, ended a lot of sports and ways that people can get out and connect in nature. And so we want kids to have that opportunity to move, be healthy, uh, burn off that energy and um, stay fit. So that's part of our foster care awareness focus. And we're hoping that people are willing to help donate. We hope so as well. Khadija walker Fobbs, Chief Strategy Officer, Johnson Center. We appreciate your time. Please support them. If you can't foster a child, please consider donating as well.